Millions of homeless pets are looking for companions. There are also thousands of shelters and rescues trying to get the word out about the pets they are currently sheltering. Taking a great adoption photo and giving that homeless pet a voice isn't difficult or time consuming, and bottom line, it saves lives. As an animal welfare advocate, you owe it to the homeless pets to represent them at their best and reduce their stay at your facility. My name is Jimmy Eglin, and I am the Director of Operations at Prairie Paws Animal Shelter in Ottawa, Kansas. I have built a small photography studio in my office. I have taken over 3,000 photos of homeless pets in my animal welfare tenure. I also happen to be a master photographer. But even the most inexperienced photographer can make an adoption photo sing. A 2014 study by Rachel Lampe and Thomas Witt at the Royal Veterinarian College study the effects of photos of black lab mixes on the length of stay before they found their new home. Small and out of focus photos led to a longer length of stay. A dog with a quality photo was often adopted within 14 days compared to 43 days for a poor quality photo. We see it every time we take pictures. We often initially post the intake photo, but once we have time, we will actually take a good quality photo and post it, and that's when the phone and email messages start pouring in. Great adoption photographs instantly grab the potential adopter's attention and can speak directly to their heart. We've been told over and over again that a single photograph has led a pet to finding their forever home. There have been many cases where we have changed out a photo of a long-termer and that has generated newfound interest and led to an adoption. We often have adopters driving across state lines to come say hello to their new potential companion. Social media is your friend and a great photo can be shared that by thousands and thousands of people. That not only gets amazing exposure for the homeless pet, but also for your shelter or rescue. I talk to a lot of people in animal welfare about the challenges that they face when they're taking photos. It usually falls into two categories. One, photography is hard. And two, they don't have any fancy equipment. We do speak in a different language in photography. We talk in f-stops and shutter speeds and apertures and ISO, but that just complicates things. Really what you're looking for is good quality light. There's a photographer named Chase Jarvis. He had a great quote. He said, the best camera is the one that you have on you. We all carry around these small devices in our pockets. They are absolutely amazing nowadays at taking great photos. There's great apps out there that make taking photos and editing them so easy. If you don't have a fancy cell phone, you can always use a point and shoot camera. Just some tips on that is turn off the flash. On camera flash bounces right back into the camera lens. That's where you get the green eyes and the wide eyes and the crazy red eye. Um, put it in sports mode so if they're moving around a lot you can stop the motion there. And you can put it in burst mode so you can take multiple shots very very quickly. So this is my setup in my studio. You can see we have, this is a four by six foot soft box. I have an umbrella light over here. I got a kicker light over here. This is all fancy equipment. But what, what I want to talk about and how you can get better photos is don't focus on the equipment. Don't focus on all the technical aspects of photography. What I want you to focus on is light. Good quality light will make everything look better. It makes your, your lunch look better when you're posting that photo on Instagram. It makes your selfies look better when you're sitting in your car. But basically what we got here, this four by six foot soft box puts out a beautiful, nice, soft light. Good quality light gives you shape, direction. It gives you the ability to see all that fur and the, those eyes and all that stuff that makes people want to adopt this, this animal, makes them want to come to your shelter or your facility and look at those animals. So if you don't have this, there are some other options. All right, so here we are in our conference room. So I know what you're saying, you're like, I don't have any fancy equipment, I don't have a big, huge soft box. But what we have here is a nice bank of windows. This is our soft box. This is beautiful light pouring in. This is Charlie. So Charlie's gonna be our model for the day. What I suggest doing, if you wanna be successful, is have a handler, somebody that can have Charlie on a leash. Safety-wise, if you try to do all this yourself, uh, it's an exercise in futility. So definitely get some volunteers ready, um, get some staff, 
whoever you want to want to get to handle the animals. Um, but basically, what their job is is to keep them stationary in one spot. My job is to get them to look to me. So then I go to my bag of tricks. So here we got a whole bunch of different squeakers and things like that. So um, everybody knows about the the ball squeakers and stuff like that. If you can actually pop the reeds out, you can actually pop them in your mouth. Huh? You can actually make the noise. That frees your hands up to actually put both hands on the camera for more stability. And when you squeak, the sound is coming from the camera. So that's a little tip. Uh, so anytime that you can get weird squeakers, this one sounds like a duck. The high pitch one works great for terriers. Um, this is basically the same duck call, but it has a very long thing. Apparently it's like a hedgehog. Uh. At least that's what the toy was that I pulled it out of after my dogs destroyed it. So we got a bunch of stuff. There's little, little noises and things like that. So you will notice I do not have my big fancy camera that I normally use. So we are going to be using the cell phone. We're going to take a picture of Charlie here and let's see what we can get. So where we're at is the back part of the shelter here, hence the barking dogs, and you can hear all that. This is actually um, kind of our staff patio. So we have blue sky over here, we got blue sky up here, and we have nothing coming in from here to here. So what we're going to do is put Charlie in this space here, and we're going to take a, um, this time I'm not using a cell phone, I'm just going to use a, a cheap little point and shoot camera, and then we'll see what we can get from that as well. You can do this. Photos of adoptable pets are their voices. Make them sing. Don't settle for anything less than amazing. Homeless pets' lives depend on it. You are their publicist, and their next and last gig is finding unconditional love at a forever home.